are familiar with our problems. Uh, I think that I am familiar with the fact that you are going to ignore this particular problem until it swims up and bites you on the ass. Oh, Matt Brody sometimes got it right. This is Tim and Sierra, Giant Straight Talk, powered by Online Big Blue LLC. Want to talk about Brian Dable. Want to talk about the potential toxicity of Brian Dable. Want to talk about how all of a sudden people are turning the tides on Wink and going over to the team Dable. And, and you knew it was going to happen. You, you literally knew it was going to happen. Wink was one of these guys. He, he was kind of like, he was kind of, he was very folksy. Everyone loved his press conferences. Everyone loved how he blitzed every, he reminded you of the giants of yore. But the problem is the giants defense ranked 27th. They gave up multitudes of high scoring games to high scoring offenses. Uh, people will also point out that some of the giant defenders had some of their best seasons or their best seasons under wink. And wink was a very boisterous character. Wink was a guy that had no qualms letting know that he, you know, he was looking for a head coaching job down the road. And it was just one of those things. It was a perfect marriage for the giants for two years. And wink Martindale until da, 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 everything that happened with Brian Dable. And I think what led to, I think it was Brian Dable's insecurities that really led to the downfall of Wink and the the, re, the resigning of Wink. And, and I think a lot of giant fans, and especially those on social media and Twitter, they're kind of turning a blind eye to it now because they don't, they don't want to take a look at the head coach because they don't want to think that the head coach is the problem again because of everything that went on with Pat Shermer and Joe judge. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's, there's, there's, there's a plethora of coaches and a plethora of issues that the giants have dealt with in reference to their head coaching situation. But I just think it's funny that all of a sudden you turn, you turn against wink and, and I love it. Cause they'll point, they start pointing out on Twitter. Well, it's not Brian Dables. I, he does, he doesn't need to adjust to his coaching staff. They need to adjust to him. This came from a beat writer and uh, the giants ranked offense ranked 27th. So, you know, it's not like we had, we had this great off defense, excuse me, defense ranked 27th. It's not like we had this great defense anyways, under wink. Hmm. Okay. So by that logic, you needed to get rid of Kafka and, and potentially get rid of Dable. Because if you're going to talk about the Giants offense, you need to talk, excuse me, defense, you're going to need to talk about the Giants offense. And the Giants offense was not really a jug, has not really been a juggernaut for almost two years now. And, and if you take a look at it, they scored zero against Dallas. They did, they scored 12 against the 49ers, three against Seattle, 16 against the Dolphins, nine against the Bills. 14 against the Commanders, 10 against the Jets, 6 against the Raiders, 17 against the Cowboys, seven, uh, excuse me, 10 against the Patriots, 6 against the Saints, and, and 10, I, I, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that if you look at it, you're just kind of scratching your head like, well, okay, if you're going to sit there and say wait, uh, Wink is the issue because his defense wasn't holding people, how can you sit there and look at it in the straight face and say the Kafka is not the issue because of the fact that the defense is always on the field? So you want to talk about firing wing because he had the 27th ranked offense. Why why is Dable not firing Kafka since it's the worst offense since 1979? And it's the fickleness of the Giants fans that really get me because it's the fact that there's certain things you want to do. It's just it's easier to blame certain people than it is to actually look at the big picture. And that's that's kind of why we had the Matt, excuse me, the uh, Matt Brody sound effect from Jaws. Everyone, when we, when we brought in Bobby Johnson, everyone loved Bobby Johnson. I like Bobby Johnson because he looked like Rob Zombie. But everyone loved Bobby Johnson. And when he called Glowinski and Bredesen and all those people dirtbags two years ago and in that affectionate way, it endeared so many people to Bobby Johnson. And I had to hear for a season how great Bobby Johnson was going to be, how he's going to turn around this line, how he's going to do this and this. And then when the line did not turn around, the line did not progress, it was all of a sudden Bobby Johnson's fault. Now, I do think Bobby Johnson is at blame, but the Giants haven't been Giants offensive line hasn't been able to pick up a stunt in five years. How many offensive line coaches have we had? It couldn't also be the fact that we all kind of thought that Glowinski was probably a system guy, kind of like a Nate Solder when he came up from the Colts. And and he fit in that Colts system. That's why he had pretty much a pedestrian career and started playing at like an average enough alignment when he went to the Colts. Maybe just the fact that Bredesen wasn't good. Maybe just the fact that no one could do anything with Matt from Connecticut. Maybe McKeithen and Azuda, they're just, they're just not players. <laughs> I mean, maybe the fact that, well, like I said, we like to point out everything with, um, with old Evan Neal, 
and Evan Neal only played in seven games. They only gave up two sacks, but then you bring the likes of Justin Pugh who gave up eight. People don't want to, we don't want to look at that. We don't want to look at the talent that maybe this offensive line has. And sometimes you can only just make so much with hamburger because if we did that, we would have to then look at the whole picture and we would have to look at Joe Shane and we would have, I'm not saying it's time to get rid of Shane. Please don't, don't think that what I'm saying, this is you have to look at the talent that Joe Shane is bringing in. A lot of it's not panned out vis-a-vis the draft or free agency. You keep drafting offensive linemen. You keep bringing offensive linemen in. You keep doing this and that. And at the end of the day, they're just not working out. And you actually let Shane didn't. It was more because of salary cap reasons. You let quality offensive linemen go. But we don't want to talk about that. We want to talk about we just need to fire Bobby Johnson. Because this is the giant way. This is the giant fan base way. We've talked about this before. First, you fire the coordinators. I mean, excuse me. First, you fire the coordinators and the coaches. Then when that doesn't work out, you then go and you fire the head coach. And when that doesn't work out, you turn around and then you finally fire the general manager. This is what the Giants have done for the last 15 years. This is the way they operate. It's always someone else's fault until the level of of crap reaches a little bit higher Then it's the next level's fault. The next person's fault on the line. And that's fine, but that's a bad way to operate a franchise. There's no continuity. And then, like I said, for the fan base and everyone to turn all of a sudden on Wink, it's because they don't want to look at Dable. They don't want to look over at Dable and say, you know, there has been rumblings all year round that he is a little controlling. There was rumblings last year, I mean, two years ago, too, when he was coach of the year, that he's controlling that he doesn't know how to to you know to to reel in his temper that he's extremely he he's 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 beyond demanding to the point where it's it's to his detriment he doesn't let things this is what people are this is what people we've heard for 2 years he doesn't let things go we've seen examples of it everyone talks and points to the example of him throwing the iPad at Daniel Jones i didn't have a problem with it because Daniel Jones wasn't really didn't look like he was really paying attention. But here's the problem I have. <laughs> you signed off on bringing Daniel Jones back for $160 million, and you're going to throw an iPad at him? And you're going to leave him in games that are blowouts? And I don't know what proof, I don't know what point you're proving with that because Daniel Jones is in year five. He's not like he's a second year quarterback. Teaching him a lesson by leaving him in a blowout does nothing but give you the opportunity to get him hurt. You know, we talk about the arguments that he had with Wink on the sidelines. There was that game towards the end of the season. Him and Wink were kind of going after it a little bit. And as they were leaving the field, they were still going after it. And as they walked back on the field after halftime, they're still going after it. And even during the halftime kickoff, they're still going after it. You're supposed to squash shit in the locker room. You're not supposed to bring it back out with you. To, to start the second half. And then, then, then Dable comes out and says, now, what, what, what the hell are you talking about? And people are like, you have people, you know, watching the game. Going, it's very peculiar what's going on here. But it, Dable just denies it. No, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what, what problem? We were just having a conversation. And when you're, when you are an offensive genius, when you're the offensive guru and your offense can't put up any points, what is an easier thing to do than blame Kafka? then to blame your quarterback, then to blame your offense. You blame the defensive coordinator. Well, it's the defensive coordinator's fault. And then from the story of the firing or, or the resignation, you had the press conference in the morning and Shane and Dable are sitting there and Dable was asked specifically, if, you know, what, what's going on with the coaches. And he goes, I expect both Kafka and Wink to come back. And I love it because a bunch of people pointed out, uh, if you watch the video during that part of the conversation, you could see Joe Shane's hand shaking and almost to the point that he was nervous about something. And I love it before. Cause we've said it. I said it from Joe Shane's very first press conference. He wasn't very media savvy. And, and I hoped he would got, he would have gotten better in the last two years. And honestly, he's, if, if you're, if, if you want to go play poker with someone, you go play poker with Joe Shane because his media savviness is still not there. And then for you to say that at nine o'clock in the morning, then around two 30 in the afternoon, you have wink quit. 
there, there was something that went on between nine in the morning and two 30. Oh, what went on was the giants fired two of Dable's, excuse me, two of Ka- uh, Wink's assistants, two of, two, two of his assistant coaches, two gentlemen that he brought with him from Baltimore and told the giants, these are my right hand guys. I, I can't take this job without these guys. So Wink didn't fire him. So there had to be someone that went around Wink's back and fired him. And you have to think it's going to be K. It's, you have to think it's going to be Dable because Dable runs the coaching staff. And for him not to have a conversation with the fact that these gentlemen were going to be let go, who are who are considered to be the right hand men of Wink, that's a little bush league. That's a little cowardice. That that's that's a little uh, that's a little that's a, that's a little hey I know how to get rid of Wink. I will go behind his back and fire his guys because Wink seems to be extremely loyal. And I'll turn around and then we'll be like, oh, okay, it'll be all right. <laughs> we'll get him to quit. We'll get him to quit that way. Because this way we don't have to look bad by firing him. We'll get him to quit. That's kind of Bush League. Uh, and I don't care how you want to chop it up. I don't care if you love Dable. I don't care if you hate Dable. There are, there are some red flags. Like one, 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 one of you are yeah. familiar with our problems. Uh, I think that I am familiar with the fact that you are going to ignore this particular problem until it swims up and bites you on the ass. And like Joe Judge, we're going to ignore this problem until it comes back and bites us in the ass. Some of us will be sitting there waving the flag saying, hey, listen, look over here. Look over here. we got an issue. While other people are like, no, no, we're going to run some laps. We're going to run some laps. Some, we're going to show our support for the coach by running laps. We're gonna run. Our, we're gonna. We're gonna show support for the coach by running laps, which is considered a punishment in any other aspect of football. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I, I think the fact is you got to keep an eye on Dable. Dable was like I said. Dable, if you take a look, he was the boy wonder. He was the genius. He at that six and two run, there was nothing that he could do wrong. But the facade has been cracking. Ever since then, what has he won? Eight games. Or excuse me, nine games since that six and two run. I, I I mean the offense hasn't looked any better. There there again there, there's some there's something very wrong here. And you just take a look at it and again was he a product of Josh Allen? You always think that because of the fact that we talk about Eric Bieniemy. Eric Bieniemy was he just a product of having a great quarterback in Patrick Mahomes? And potentially the answer for that is yes. So it's great that he gets, it's great that he gets all the accolades day before coach of the year, but I think those accolades are over. I think, I think, I think we're getting kind of done with that. Aren't we? Isn't it time to move on? Cause you will now be two years removed from when you made the playoffs and you went nine, seven and one, then you finished six and 11. You currently have a record of 15 and 18 and one in 34 games. And then everyone wants to talk about who they're going to bring in. Uh, you know, to me, I think the I think the honest assessment of who you can bring in the offense defense coordinator is going to be like someone like Leslie Frazier. I don't like the idea of bringing in Leslie Frazier. I, I, I but I think he's a, he's a wink guy, so I think he's going to be a good soldier and do whatever Wink tells him. I'm not a big fan of the Leslie Frazier hire. I don't want Matt Patricia. I don't want Matt Patricia anywhere near this organization. I love how the people want to bring back Patrick Graham. Patrick Graham, of course, does have a uh, a, um, a connection to to Dable. Um, so I mean, and, and they tried to keep him before he went over to the Raiders job. But Patrick Graham left the Giants for a reason. People forget <laughs> he left the Giants for a reason. We're not going to get into that, but he opted to leave the Giants and take the same role with the Raiders. Okay, let, let, let's 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 let that sink in. And the other big name, of course, is Antonio Pierce. I, I'm really not sure what uh, why people think Antonio Pierce is going to be a good defensive coordinator. He's never been a defensive coordinator in the NFL. <laughs> uh, he was a defensive coordinator for one year at Arizona State in 2021. It's, and you and right now is the interim head coach of the Raiders. He went five and four. But you really want to bring in a guy that's net. You already have a guy that was not a def- excuse me, an offense coordinator in Kafka. But now you want to bring back Antonio Pierce, who's never been a defensive coordinator in the NFL, and let him run your defense. 
I, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes I just scratch my head <laughs> and not in a good way because a lot of this just, it, it's, it's, this is very judging. This is very Shermer esque. This, this, this is, this is just getting to that point once again, that we don't want to look into the mirror at the, what the real problems could potentially be. All we want to do is do the quick fix, blame the little guys and not look at the top. Got a lot of fun videos coming up again this week. And again, this is Tim. This is New York Giants. Straight talk. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell. You want to know why? That'd be awesome.